welcome to AEF TV and uh, I'm joined now by Jasandra Naika from Biotherm Energy and uh, uh, Jasandra firstly thank you for taking the time to be here You're and uh, uh, you know uh, busy two and a half days now uh, uh, off the show and we're talking a little bit off air about uh, uh, the uh, subject of renewables mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the role that renewables have to play as a mix within uh, within generation and you're particularly involved in what's happening in South Africa. That's um, so tell me a little bit about how you see the role of renewables and then I've got a couple of other questions sure. following on from sure. that. So I see renewables as a necessity as part of the energy mix. It needs to definitely be part of it. Um, the advantage of renewables is that it is modular um, and it's scalable and therefore much easier to deploy. Um, if you look at the South African environment, uh, we're likely to deploy about a gigawatt of, of power coming from renewables over the next two years. And when you're talking renewables, you're talking wind and solar. solar. I'm right. talking wind and solar. Right. Um, it, there is a bit of biomass in that, mm. uh, as well as some hydro, but it's predominantly wind and solar. And CSP, which right. uh, adds to it as well. And, uh, and how are you seeing uh, the... Uh, South African government announced an initiative, we want X amount of generation from renewables. So yes. that announcement in itself creates a marketplace because yes. you need to then achieve that. How are you, are you seeing other countries looking at that and going, oh, we'd like to do that? Mm -hmm. uh, and what conditions do you need to have in place as a company who would then invest into those companies. What do you like to see in place? Okay, I think let's take a step back and talk about South Africa's program mm. uh, and a quick overview. Uh, that is driven by demand mm. uh, and the fact that a certain amount of supply needs to be online by a certain period of time. So when the government announces you know, a 3.2 gigawatt program, you know, they're looking to, well, when can that actually come online? So what that then results in is a timetable and a speed to getting to that end point. And as a result of which, it allowed for a very well-regulated environment, but at the same time, a very, an environment that was controlled from a timing perspective in order to show, ensure that things actually happened. Mm -hmm. I think that is necessary across all of Africa in order for, it, uh, for renewables to really kick off, because what it's done is that it's actually allowed us to be focused in our approach um, and also ensure, uh, in some way, guarantee that if we are successful from a bidding perspective, we will actually bid within a certain period of time, construct in a certain period of time, and then connect to the grid. So what you're saying is that, le let's say another country wants to go down, the, down this road, they need to have that set time frame in place because then, from a commercial point of view, you guys can plan, you know that, okay, in in three years time a decision will get made because exactly. otherwise if it's open-ended you're just running around yes, just and constantly it's, bidding and therefore it becomes much more costly yeah. to do so uh, and you also need a, a well-regulated environment if you mm. look at the renewable energy program in South Africa it was very well regulated very well thought through in terms of what the requirements were and what government actually mm. wanted to get out of it and what other countries are you seeing looking at South Africa and uh, saying right okay well we will do something similar, similar. Um, we've seen it happen in Rwanda, Zambia, uh, Mauritius as uh, initial examples of having a program or a tender-based program whereby people bid in uh, a particular project and they then, it then gets evaluated and a decision is made. Uh, there are other countries in Africa who are doing it on a project-by-project -project basis and the initiative is from uh, the developer in order to go out and negotiate that. Whereas the South African program was regulated in terms of what the PPA needed to look like, etc., uh, and effectively was rubber stamped to a large extent. Yeah, and it, it, again, looking at um, uh, the way the renewables economy and, uh, and everything works, I suppose the other thing you need is you, you need that sort of feed-in tariff uh, infrastructure to be in place as well. And yeah, if not a feed-in tariff, you know, South Africa is based on an auction-based, so it's a competitive bid. A feeding tariff is definitely more attractive Active. because it then allows and definitely uh, accelerates uh, and catalyzes the, the rate at which local content, local manufacturing comes into play because there's a known quantum. Yeah. If you are able to meet that tariff, you are then known that you've got your, there's more security in it. So, so because that was interesting because we had uh, a, a, a member of the Treasury from South Africa talking about that competitive bid thing. So, 
it sounds to me like what happened was okay here, here here's the envelope we'd like the bids to be in who can come in at the lowest yeah do you not think that there's a danger that someone says yeah we can do it at this price point but they know it's unrealistic and then mm. you've got that scope creep element of it uh, yes it's a definite risk and you know mm. it's very likely to happen as it becomes more competitive mm. uh, I guess what, what one needs to then evaluate is whether one can actually deliver within that uh, pricing structure or pricing regime and what contingency they've actually placed on, mm. on, on their particular bid mm. And uh, uh, again, looking at opportunities around, because a lot of discussions here about uh, uh, different models and distributed models, centralized models, and, uh, uh, and so on. So, so the, the, there's one question that comes to my mind where, uh, and, and this was in another interview at another event, not at this event, where people were talking about, okay, well, actually, you know, uh, pr providing electrification to communities need not be all about building a massive grid infrastructure. Yes. We can use renewables to build, let's say, micro localized Grids. generation mm -hmm. for a community where the, the, the power consumption need actually is not, it's, it's about charging the mobile phones because actually they're, they're, a lot of stuff happens mm -hmm. on mobile phones uh, and keeping the lights on a little bit longer so you know kids can do homework and things like that. Are, are you guys involved in those sort of projects? Uh, not on the micro programs. Right. Um, and there's pros and cons to that. Mm -hmm. uh, I do think those can work and they'll be more effective if there are maintenance programs in place. What we've often seen specifically across certain parts of Africa is that Modules get donated, mm. they're stuck on roofs or schools mm. or in, in a community, but the maintenance of it doesn't really happen because it was more of a donation rather than actually a program. That's an interesting model. So, so yeah. you could go into a community and you could say, look, we'll do all of this yeah. as long as you can afford the Basic maintenance on, yeah. on, a, on a monthly rate or, or whatever yeah. it is. Because then you know, it's sustainable. It's exactly. going to be there for the longer term. Yeah. Uh, and you then have a community that is appreciative of it and mm. uh, supports it, yeah. as opposed to one that says, "Oh, you put up a solar panel and it's broken in a month." You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, yeah, that is, that was disappointing. You know, yes, it just it, works for exactly. a month. What a load yeah. of rubbish! Yeah. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, it's been great having you here, and Thank we're you. coming coming to the uh, end of our time. And. Uh, uh, I'm asking this of everybody, so uh, put you on the spot a little bit, turn you into my roving reporter for the, for the day. Yeah. Uh, with the uh, conversations you've had, what would uh, you say has been you know, uh, your highlight as in, oh, it's great that this conversation is happening or, yeah. or, 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 or it's exciting to see this? Um, I have to say the Kenyan IPP discussion was, was great that it's happening. I'm, mm. I'm really glad that that's taking place. And that, this is a great platform for it to happen. Yeah. Just hope that it actually materializes much sooner. Well, yeah, yeah, there, there are signs of that. There are signs of that. Uh, yeah. Uh, on that note, we'll leave it. And uh, thank you for watching. Uh, it's uh, AEF TV, and uh, this is available on the AEF website, on Angerati, and uh, obviously on NGNet as well. Thanks for watching.